There's a huge difference between asking for help and accepting help. So many people ask for help, Chris. Uh, not a whole lot of them accept it when it's offered to them. Tell us about that for you. It's uh, it's still hard to to accept um, accept that I need help. It really is. Um, you know, I, I I don't know. You know, I I grew up in a in a typical a typical Appalachian family, right? Um, you know, work hard. Uh, you know, keep your nose clean. Um, you know, be good with your family, and everything will be fine, right? Um, you never asked for help. Um, you know, I think you know my father has his own own issues, but never never sought help for them. Um, I see my brother go through things, and, and he's not at a point where he can he's comfortable seeking help. And I think, you know, in my own experiences, it, it's still tough to say, I got to sit down and, and, you know, you, it, I can go see the psychiatrist. And like you said, you know, I can tell him, okay, here's where I'm at. Here's where I was, da, 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 you know, test medication, but you want to sit me down, um, for half an hour with a therapist. That's tough for me yet because I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, it was and sometimes I might sit down and and, and, and and like I feel completely normal, even though I'm not. So, well, the, what we, all, we all put masks on. We all try to, try to present ourselves in how we think other people want to see us or how we want to be seen by other people. I um I have instituted. I think what what has worked best for me is um um kind of like every two appointments I take my wife with me. Wonderful. And when I take Melissa with me, Melissa's able to sit down and go, mm -mm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> mm -mm. So you she, know, and she will she'll say, Well, he's he's doing this, he's doing that, and he's doing and then I'll sit there and go, uh, Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> you know, um, and I'll actually realize that that was happening where I, I you know, I may not have realized it before. So. Well, that uh, sometimes when we bring in spouses, partners, children, uh, whoever, uh, they might say, "Well, did you know that they ran up ten credit cards? Do you know they ten max ten credit cards out? Did you know that they uh, bought a Lamborghini? Did you know that they bought tickets to France?" Uh, but that's something that you wouldn't share with them. Perhaps, yeah. Um, I that that is the one. Yeah, so that's probably my saving grace is that um, I have a good support system right in my house, and um, that's so so important, Chris. Because quite often we help we we almost insist on having families be come in so they can understand how they can help and not enable, and understand that sometimes. Concern leads to frustration, and sometimes frustration leads to anger mm -hmm. when you're dealing with somebody uh, who has a who has a disorder. And I think you know Melissa did something that um, I think was a, a really good idea as well. Is, is she went and she saw uh, her own therapist, and she picked one that had experience with with uh, bipolar disorder, and he was able to sort of explain things that she might come up against things that she might see things that she might have to deal with and and you know give her some some suggestions of maybe how she could handle it um or you know or help with it um and uh you know melissa's a fixer i'm a fixer we want to you know we want to help fix each other um this gives her a way to kind of she's able to sort of separate from whatever emotion I'm having now, instead of going through that. I mean, if I was depressed, she'd get depressed, yes. you, you know, um, and I think that happens a lot with couples. Um, and now she's able to separate herself and by her being able to do that. And, and, you know, some people might say, Oh, Oh, that's bad. She's not feeling what you're feeling. No, that's very good. That's wonderful. Because when she's able to separate herself from me, then I can come back quicker. When she's depressed, that makes me more depressed because I'm like, I, I made her this way, right? And I don't, you know, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be responsible for that. Um, and so she's she's been able to to uh, to really manage um, both, you know, her own health and 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 help me manage mine because of that well so. what we help people understand on this show and to keep in mind these are our own opinions but we take the viewpoint that being a mama being a daddy being a brother being a sister being a friend being whatever doesn't define who you are 
your values and your choices, your non-negotiables, your sense of your finding your authentic self defines who you are. And when you can clarify that and focus on that, you'll be a much better husband, a much better wife, a much better daughter, a much better brother, a much better son, a, a much better friend. So that's wonderful that she's working on herself and you're working on yourself. That 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 is great. Another thing that we ask is that. I normally ask my patients, other people, uh, ask them if if the bipolar disorder defines who they are. I don't think it it defines me. I think there's a there's a lot of things that make me up. Um, and bipolar is one of them. Um, so I wouldn't say it necessarily defines me. It 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 is part of me, um, and it's uh it's part of my journey, and it's it's um it's it's something that I, you know, I. I think I'm, you know, I wanted to step up and, and be ready and, and, and make an impact on it. Um, but it's, it's, it's no more me than, than, uh, anything else is in my life. Certainly. So. It's, it's something that you deal with. It doesn't define who right. you are. Like what I mentioned earlier, you don't walk into a room and say, hi, I'm bipolar. You walk in and say, hi, I'm Chris. Right. So that's, that, that, defines, that defines who you are. So could you share with the folks a little bit what's working in your life today? You know, I, I was telling you earlier, they handed me a, a thin little handbook, and, and it basically said, you know, pretty, pretty you know, standard definitions for everything. And if, if, you just, if you just keep a routine, you know, you'll be able to keep your, your bipolar disorder in, in check. Uh, I don't fully, well, I fully find it. It's very hard to keep a routine <laughs> anyways, but I, I also, uh, think there's more to it than that. But, um, the way we're treating it, uh, uh, right now is, um, I'm trying to be more open to listening to Melissa as to what phase I'm in. That helps me then, uh, active listening, active, yeah, actively, you know, take actions to it. Um, I am on a, um, a mood stabilizer. Okay. Um, I found that to though, you know, not be a, uh, a perfect cure all. Um, it does, it has so far limited me from, uh, going uh really really high in my manic phases um it hasn't always fixed the depressive phases mm -hmm. um but that's something i guess you know we'll, we'll keep trying well, sure how long have you been on these uh, i've mood been stabilizer. on the mood stabilizer for uh, at least a year now okay um and uh and so we've we'll keep regulating that what i what i understood and and, and what kind of really motivated me was that I wanted I wanted to have that energy, but I wanted to focus that energy. And I think being able to limit um, how hard I I go in when I'm in the manic phase, it does keep me more focused. I'm able to complete projects better. I'm I'm able to sort of drive through things now. So rather than fight against that energy, you use it. Yeah, but I will say, you know, if I'm if I'm in depression, then what really gets me out of depression is is having something to to really put my energy towards. And so if I can, if I can get myself motivated enough to put myself on a project, then, then that helps me get out of things. Too, so, so, and also what we do is we help people learn how to talk to each other. Like they talk to a friend, mm -hmm. uh, and make, making yourself your own friend. 90% uh, of cognitive behavioral therapy is about changing your vocabulary in the way you speak to yourself. Okay. So the shoulds, the have tos, the need tos, the must, <laughs> you know, we, we kind of, we, we ask people to replace those with, uh, I choose or I could. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. It's the second time I've heard that today. I actually heard it, um, this, this afternoon that, that should, should, should must be removed from our, <laughs> well, they, our vocabulary. Yeah. Uh, it's a bad they give word. You, they, you give you, they give so. you, they give you, we work on choices here. We so. have, well, there's a couple power words that we help people do and that I am what they are and hear the sound of their own voice, and I choose. When you say, I have to go to therapy, or I have to exercise, or I have to go to work, or I have to go to Aunt Mary's on Thanksgiving, that, <laughs> that, that's going to set you up for a bad day. So, however, if you say, I choose to pay the electric bill, as I love Netflix, or when you give yourself choices, you're freeing yourself and you're empowering yourself. And really, uh, Chris, all it is is a, is a change in vocabulary. 
on how you speak to yourself. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these, these self-defeating words are really, really something. So tell us about your life today, today. <laughs> um, to, you know, today, like I said, for the last, last few days, I think I've, I've, I've managed to work, work back into a normal, you know, normal range. And, and I'm, I'm very happy about that right now. Um, it, what, you know, in sharing my story, what it, what I wanted to do was really show that, I guess I think the media does this, uh, too often is they, they show you the extremes of mental health. You know, I'm the, chief executive officer of a nonprofit organization. I worked hard to get to the top of my field. Um, I've been successful. Um, I have a, a, a wonderful, beautiful family. Um, you know, I have so much good in my life. Um, and, and I'm very happy about that. Um, though at times, you know, I, I can't always put it, keep it in focus. So, um, you know, and that's what, you know, that's what I wanted to make, make sure people understood that, you know, I am not going to go postal <laughs> and, uh, and, but I do have bipolar disorder. You have bipolar disorder. However, you're, you, first of all, you're Chris, you're a father, you're a husband, uh, you're a employee, you're a good person, you're a member of the universe, you're one of the creator's children. And uh, that's that that's very important. So and sometimes the media does portray mental health as people walking around in a straitjacket being carried off to the mental hospital. Uh, absolutely. Or or someone that you can't you can't trust, you shouldn't be around and, and that's that's definitely not you know, that's not the case. So, so if you have a sore throat, you would probably go to the doctor. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have some overwhelming, debilitating type of illness that has you flat on your back and you have to be taken in an ambulance uh, to the doctor. You know, we deal with people who are perhaps having a little difficulty with the speed bumps and the potholes mm -hmm. in life. And maybe they affect them just a little more than they would other people. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't it make sense to help level out the the uh, speed bumps and maybe fill in the potholes a bit? I, I think, yeah, I think, uh, I, absolutely. And I think there's been a, I think there started, started to be a shift here in the United States that calls for, um, you know, better mental health treatment, better mental health services. Um, but at the same time, I think there, it's coming out of a, a place of, of chaos, basically of distrust, um, instead of a, you know, a healthy place. And so hopefully, you know, we can shift it, um, so that the conversations just take place naturally because it's just a, it's, it's a natural, you know, part of being a human. So how would you, what would you say to somebody who is saying, uh, you know, I don't want to appear weak. I don't want to. I, I get, you know, I get that. Um, I get that. And, you know, part, part of that, you know, part of that is in your head, right? When, when you're seeking treatment, um, I failed, right. Um, but you haven't failed. Um, you know, this is, this is just something you need a little extra help with. Um, and there's no, I mean, you know, when you, when you move, you ask for help, right? Uh, you need some extra help when you're moving your, That's a great <laughs> you know, analogy. to a new house. Um, so why not get, get a little bit of extra help? If you're an athlete, you, athlete, you have a coach, why not get a coach? Um, uh, it, there's there's nothing wrong with this. Um, you know, we, we have to break that ingrained um, you know notion that uh, you know if you're struggling with depression or bipolar disorder, or PTSD, or you know whatever mental health issue that that you might be um, having an issue with, that you know it's okay to go ahead and and seek the help that you need. please check out our website at fishingwithoutfaith.com where you can listen to the show, comment on our discussions, and find out where you can subscribe to our podcast. If you're interested in flying the colors of Fishing Without Bait, click the shop icon on our website. We have clothing, mugs, cell phone cases, and so much more. Show the world that you fish without bait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.